Tanzania. In the shadow of Mount Kilimanjaro, the Pangani River is at the centre of a struggle for water. Poor rainfall in recent years has left the land, the dams, the people and animals thirsty for water. Demand is growing, even as supplies diminish. Without intervention, the outlook is bleak. Earth Report investigates the shortages, the conflicts, and the plans to safeguard the health of the Pangani River Basin. The Pangani River Basin in northeastern Tanzania starts high on the slopes of Mounts Kilimanjaro and Meru. From the lush foothills of these majestic volcanoes, the river travels 500 kilometers before spilling into the Indian Ocean. The basin covers an area of 48,000 square kilometers. Nearly four million people depend on its waters. But the future of this valuable resource is in the balance. Lake Jipe, one source of the Pangani River on the Tanzania-Kenya border, is dying. According to the Global Environment Fund, its water mass halved in the last 10 years. Low water levels and increased nutrients have led to a vast expansion of the Taifa reed. My first clear memory is from the 1950s. It was a big lake, it was great, and there were not a lot of reeds. If you left this place and went just there, you would already be in deep water. I made a living as a fisherman. I caught a lot of fish. There were very few reeds. The change started in the 1970s. The reeds started growing a lot. The lake is so small now, the reeds make fishing very difficult and you can't get many fish. A once thriving fishing industry has all but collapsed. The thick, almost impenetrable reeds now cover 75% of the lake. The limited area available for fishing is difficult to reach. To survive, many people have moved downstream to the larger man-made lake of Nyumba Yamungu. <laughs> I was living in Jipe in 1965. At that time, life at Jipe was very good. Then there became a lot of reeds, and the fishing area was very much reduced. The water was shallow, and there was a lot of mud going into the lake when it rained. Also, the drinking water became salty. Life became very difficult there. So I came here with my family to find a better life. Lake Nyumba Yamungu also suffers from changing water levels. A year ago, it was almost empty. But this year, abundant rains came, and it's full. When the water dried here, we had to travel a long way. Life was really tough. We had to go right to the other side of the lake. Nyumba Yamungu is the regulating reservoir that supplies the three hydroelectric power stations located on the Pangani River. These hydropower stations could produce almost a fifth of the electricity for the entire nation. But in recent years, according to the World Conservation Union, the IUCN, they have been running as low as 30% of capacity. There's simply not enough water. 
power rationing has been extensive. Too much water is taken out upstream by both agriculture and an expanding population. The fertile volcanic soil found in this area attracts local farming, as well as large-scale industrial agriculture, which uses a huge volume of water to irrigate their crops. Where we are here at TPC, we, we have um, limited rainfall. So without water, we can't grow cane here. Even with the rain we have, the crop will die after some months. We have to irrigate our fields. Okay, we have two main sources of water, the river, and we also have boreholes. We pump water from underground. We are the last user on this river before it goes to the big dam. We've never heard about problem in the vicinity of, of TPC whereby the, there's problem of, of, low, of low water available from the people downstream. The distance between users, both geographically and socially, often means they are unaware of their effect on other users further along the river. The situation, in fact, it was really bad because uh, water was becoming scarce, water demand has increased. There was no coordination between different users, especially upstream and downstream users. And even within a certain river reach, you'll find that the same I mean, users are competing for the scarce resource. The management was conducted regionally. In each region, there was a water board, and that one was allocating water. And those areas where there was a national interest, they were allocated at the national level. So those regions were not considering other users beyond their region boundaries. When the Nyumba Yamungu Dam was built in 1965, the sole idea was to create electricity for the nation. Local and environmental issues were largely overlooked. This led to consequences downstream. This is the site of the Kirua Swamp once the largest wetland in the basin. Not only has there been a very limited amount of water available, but the surrounding landscape has dramatically changed. This has led to tensions and conflicts between the communities surviving in this area. Since the dam was built, this area has totally changed. There are now many problems with water. We're thirsty, and it's causing fights. When we take our cows to feed, there is no grass, and the cows are dying from starvation. If you look at the land in this area now, it is barren. The government has brought electricity, but I don't get electricity. Electricity is not water. It does not help me, and I don't have the money to pay for it. Before the dam, we got water from springs near here throughout the year. We now have to go to Ruvu to get water, which is very far from here. If we go with the donkey, we leave at four in the morning, and we don't get back until two in the afternoon. People have come here from other places. They come to farm in this area. They are very aggressive and rude. Farmers moved to this area to take advantage of the fertile soils left behind when the swamp dried up. Competition for the limited water is rife. <laughs> Water from the Pangani is a problem, but the main trouble is the cattle herders. Cattle herders have their own land, but they come here to our farms.
And still there are ongoing conflicts between farmers and cattle herders. The situation had become so tense that urgent action was needed to stop the escalating violence. Thank <laughs> you.